Greetings folks, I'm out here again testing the Femi Manta VTOL. i turned the camera around the other way so I can have a look at the tail rotor thanks to a suggestion from English Turbines and uh, I'm going to do an auto tune and I've uh, reduced the feed forward a bit just to see if we uh, can improve the performance a bit but this little fellow turned up in my uh, letterbox this morning so um, I'll tell you about that. This is the Beta FPV Super G ELRS 1 watt RF module and I'll just refer to my notes here it's nano size so it'll fit straight onto the Radio Master Zorro uh, and any other nano size it also comes with a, a full size RF uh, JR Bay adapter I'll show all, you all of this stuff back on the bench when we get back home but I thought I'd come out for a fly with it first it is a dual frequency RF module has the option of Gemini mode which uh, appeared in Express LRS about a year ago I think uh, it runs on 3.3.0 and the Gemini mode means that it is actually two RF modules operating at the same time in slightly separated frequencies. So it kind of doubles the uh, link security, I suppose. Uh, your link quality is going to be sitting on 99 to 100 uh, no matter what you do. So it's just going to enhance the already amazing link quality and range of Express LRS. This uh, takes it up to the next level. Pretty amazing stuff. Beautiful little uh, aluminium CNC case with a built-in fan, a couple of customizable buttons um, and twin RPSMA antennas. But we'll just go for a fly and well all I can show you really is that it, it works. <laughs> just direct swap with the Ranger. It's clicked in there, turn him on. And you might be able to see the button, uh, the LED showing up there, or not, who knows. Um, Alright, so pop the battery in the Manta. And I set my passphrase so it's automatically bound there. All good. As I said, all I can really show you is that it's, it's going to work. Um, but we'll go for a fly and investigate more of the performance of the Femi Manta. So with that short flight demo we can show that it actually works, it just clicks in exactly the same as the other uh, RF modules. Uh, it has four different antenna modes and you can only use the diversity and uh, modes which is sort of diversity and uh, Gemini mode if you have a diversity receiver. I've only got a, a single antenna receiver in there so uh, that's not going to be using it at its full potential but it shows that it does work. You can choose one antenna, the other antenna or Gemini or diversity I think. So it's in Gemini mode, it could have been transmitting uh, both signals but there's only one antenna to receive so not true Gemini mode but uh, anyway still works. Let's go and have a look back on the bench. So what we get in the box this is a, a pre-release version so it might be a tiny bit little different in the fan area. They come in black red or grey colours. Uh, nice little bit of weight to it. You can see it has two user definable buttons there, LED and two RPSMAs, two glue stick antennas they call them. Uh, we know them as rubber duckies of course. <laughs> Get a full size JR Bay adapter there. Uh, 
uh, sticky pad there for sticking on the back of transmitters that don't have a, a proper JR bay. We also get uh, USB-C to XT30 for external power. If you're using this above 250 milliwatts, you need to power it externally from a 2S or 3S battery. We also get a USB-A to USB-C for firmware updates straight into the USB there. We also get a Futaba uh, connection cable that goes into the little plug there into Futaba radios. Knowledge base card there. And you'll also get a, a quick start guide or a manual. Being the nano size and coming with a full size adapter, you can uh, pop it in just about any sort of radio. There's a FSKI QR7 that just pops in there, no problems. Now to explain all about the Gemini mode and all the different possible modes, let's go over to the Beta FPV website. That's the best spot for all of this sort of technical information. I'm no RF architecture expert, so we'll, we'll just have a look at what they say on the website. So this schematic shows you the differences between different sorts of antenna diversity and Gemini. Uh, there's the basic, uh, which is just a single antenna, which is what I was using on the Femi Manta. Then there's antenna diversity, two antennas, uh, and it's switching between the two antennas regularly. To read the RSSI value and the, the uh, highest RSSI value antenna is the one that gets used. And then there's true diversity, like the Super D receiver, where both antennas receive the data at the same frequency, and the antenna that receives the correct data first is the one that's used. And then there's Gemini mode, the magic mode. Uh, where two antennas simultaneously receive telemetry data with frequency difference of 40 megahertz and they also transmit data simultaneously but at different frequencies. This means that you can receive the same data packets on different frequencies and antennas and this mode provides stable flight even in complex radio environments. So they're talking about things like uh, quad racing where you have lots of noise, lots of interference and you, you're going flat out high frequency, high packet rates, and you really don't want to lose signal. Uh, or for long distance where signal strength is uh, reducing the further you go, and also for professional drone style cinematic photography, stuff like that where you really don't want to lose control of your extremely expensive rig. And they're linking to a good video here uh, by Jai Smith, which shows the uh, evolution of it, I suppose. Um, I won't go into that, but uh, have a look at that video and you can see how uh, it's a very good explanation of how it all works and uh, how it evolved. And uh, the Super G Nano is the first of the commercially available uh, of these Gemini capable RF modules. Now, I'm not too sure about the actual output power. They're saying there are two one watt outputs, which I guess would make it two watts at full power. Uh, but nobody sort of mentions the 2 watts, so 2 watts or 1 watt, I'm not absolutely sure. Three different colours, nice CNC aluminium alloy casing. Now the two customizable buttons can be used for, uh, you can turn it off, you can increase the output power uh, and get into the video transmitter, if the video transmitter has got backpack firmware, enter the channel, enter the band and change the settings. Uh, you can turn on Wi-Fi with the push of a button. And these are the default setups. You can determine how many times you have to push, how long you have to push for to determine a short press or a long press and all of that sort of stuff. So nicely configurable. The FAQs show that you have to use the version 3 Lua script. And in the Lua script, uh, you'll see this extra line here, the antenna mode. You can switch between antenna 1, antenna 2, diversity or Gemini mode in this line here. So there we go, that is the future of Express LRS and extreme stable link quality and RSSI signal strength. So what I'll do now is uh, take out uh, one of my planes with a diversity receiver on it and we'll see how the link quality goes as we fly around. Very interesting new developments from Beta FPV and the Express LRS team. Very impressive indeed. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Okay, I've got the Swordfish with the Super D diversity receiver mounted up there. And the Beta FPV Super G Gemini, uh, Gemini mode uh, RF module there. It is in Gemini mode, so we should get the full benefit of the diversity 
may not be able to see it, but uh, Gemini, Gemini mode there. And we'll just keep an eye on the link quality in the OSD and uh, see if it dips much below 100. Uh, certainly not expecting it to.